Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of the Intellectual Saviors of Wrestling with your hosts, the Master of the Brain Damage, Martin, and the one and only Sam H. And this is your No Mercy 2016 review. And we are kicking things off with the pre-show, which neither of us watched. <laughs> Did anyone watch it? <laughs> <laughs> I sort of checked checked it after the pay-per-view because I wanted to see the Kurt Hawkins thing. Ugh, more from that in a minute. Well, let's quickly scout through the matches then. So, uh, you had a kickoff show. You had a uh, eight-man tag match. Mm. You had the Hype Bros. Oh, God. And American Alpha. Hey. Against the Ascension and the Vaud villains. The team that everybody forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Both of them, to be fair. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, like we said, we didn't watch it, but... Hi, bros, an American Alpha 1. Shock. Yep. <laughs> uh, I heard that American Alpha 1 with Grand Amplitude on one of the Vaud villains, I think. Yeah. And, um... I believe was the second match on the pre-show, the, um... Uh... Corbin and Swagger, man. No, I got moved up to the main show. Because uh, yes. I remember watching that one. Yes, and we were all sat there wondering why. And for the first time, we had Kurt Hawkins in a WWE ring. Yes, and literally he was in the ring, and that's it. He left. <laughs> and, and announced he'd be debuting on SmackDown. Now, one thing, I am not happy they have changed his music. They've given up some months of... His entrance music being the old Edgehead theme, and now he's got some generic creator wrestler music, which absolutely sucks. Good one, WWE. So, on to the main show. Well, we might as well start with a match I mentioned. We have Baron Corbin versus Jack Swagger. Uh, it was okay. Yeah, I wasn't very entertained by this <laughs> one. But, hey, I got my prediction right. <laughs> Yeah, Baron Corbin picked up the victory yeah. with the end of days. Hit him with a thumb to the eye. Dirty tap. In the end of days. And that is it for the All-American, but... Oh. <laughs> no doubt this rivalry will continue. <laughs> <coughs> mm. Ah, Talking of pointless matches and rivalries, hey, we got our first women's match. we got Nikki Bella versus Carmella. It was okay, I suppose. I've seen worse women's matches. I think the point of the whole thing was no one was really that involved or bothered with the match. <laughs> it's, it's been a bit of a stupid rivalry. I mean, I've only presumed it's been a way of sort of, I don't know, to build up Carmella's legitimacy yeah. a bit. I'd imagine so. But uh, no, Nikki Bella ended up picking up the victory. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with a new finisher, which has been dubbed the Rack Attack Version 2. How inventive of you, don't I? But it doesn't beat our ultimate favourite tag team move, Uh-oh. the Boot of Doom. Oh, I love the Boot of Doom. I wish they'd give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's enough of that one. Yeah, but before the show kicked off now, you might have heard on the preview show, I put a thing at the end where he said, okay, we didn't talk about the women's match because the women's title match got pulled. <sighs> Becky Lynch got sidelined with an injury, which we don't know what it was. Yeah, but she's been sidelined, sidelined for a month. <laughs> and there was a whole backstage segment where they said to Alexa Bliss, right, yeah, you're not getting your title match until November, but you will be in action. Yeah. So, on to the next match. We've got our SmackDown tag team titles on the line. We've got the challengers. Gangster Uzos. Oh, God. In their street year with their thug music. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And they were fighting your reigning champions. Beauty. And the man beast. <laughs> yeah, he's got kids, apparently. <laughs> yep, if you didn't know before, he's got kids. <laughs> he, he needs this job. He does. 
<laughs> now, a lot was made on commentary about how last month, yeah, Heath and Rhino picked up the win. But because the Usos had only they had fought a match previously, they weren't at 100%. So this was two teams at their best going at it. Yeah. And what happened? <laughs> oh, they lost again. <laughs> yeah. The Usos lost. Beauty and the Man Beast are still somehow tag team champions. I admit, I am scratching my head over this one because they've made a big deal over the Usos being reinvented, new attitude. Yeah, we're going to get them. Yeah. And you lost to Heath Slater and Rhino. On two pay-per-view straight. Yeah. They're not even a tag team. So, yeah. Uh, the, <coughs> the usual fiasco with these two, though. Heath Slater took a big beat down. Rhino came in, caused a bit of uh, destruction. And I'm trying to figure out how the match ended. Oh, uh, there was a... Rhino and one of the Usos was fighting outside the ring. He hit the Uso with the gore. Yeah. He got put into a submission. Rhino broke it up. Got the tag in. Gored with the other Uso. And Rhino pinned him. Yeah. There you go. Rhino picking up a rare... Uh, yeah, where the users go from here, who knows? Yeah. Great direction, though. Great. So, and then moving on to our next match, we would find out who Alexa Bliss would be fighting. And it was none other than Mrs. Fartu herself. Oh, dear. Yeah, we're talking about Jimmy Uso's wife, oh. Naomi. <laughs> Feel the glow. Oh, <laughs> rather not. <laughs> yeah, uh, again, this match was okay. It was a bit rushed, put together at the last minute. But uh, yeah, it was okay, but uh, in very confusing fashion, Naomi picked up the victory. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. This is another one that made me scratch my head. Yeah, you would have thought, obviously, you know, in the near future, Alexa will be fighting Becky Lynch for the Women's Championship. You know, keep the ball rolling, keep the momentum with her. Yeah, that's the way to look at it. Yeah. But we're not the WWE creative team. Oh. So, yeah, Naomi picked up the win with a strange-looking roll-up. Yeah. Which... Does neither any favours. <laughs> You're like, well, Alexa's still number one contender. Mm, yeah. And so, what was the point of the match? Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. The crowd was quite quiet for this one. I don't think anyone really cared. No. But the crowd were loud for our next match. Oh, yes. There it was for the Intercontinental title. And hopefully, the end of the most awful intercontinental title run in a few years I like that we had The Miz defend his title against Dolph Ziggler yeah credit has to go to the promo department because the pre-match thing for this was amazing yeah it was a hell of a hell of a promo video really showed every, all, the, all their rises in their careers Dolph coming from his caddy to and White <laughs> Oh, I miss them days. <laughs> yeah, so then the unfortunate reminder of, yes, the Spirit Squad did exist. <laughs> yeah, there used to be five of them. Hmm. But apparently there's only three of them. <laughs> Including Dolph. Yeah. Right? So, uh, on to the match. Wow. Well, uh, certainly took me through the emotions. Obviously, I was slightly biased because I just thought, don't fuck this up we can't have another Miz victory oh, I was extremely biased it was, I was <laughs> under no circumstances did I want Miz to win <coughs> yeah, I started to get a little bit worried towards the end of the match when uh, Maurice called out the spirit squad and bloody Kenny and Mikey came out yeah I was raging on my TV at this point because I was like okay Maurice has gotten involved they did the whole hairspray thing again for the yeah. third match in a row and then you saw your favourite thing. <laughs> yeah. You look most far too. Ref. You. 
out of here. <laughs> I can't help it. Every time he does that, I just get excited. I'm like, yes, throw him out. You're gone. And he did the whole, oh, I'm the ref. Yeah. And then, in the end, the Miz ended up eating a very meaty super kick. Yeah. And we have, thankfully, a new Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, the end of one of, another of Miz's seven or eight useless title reigns, which has done nothing for any title he's held. <laughs> and just his face at the end. I wanted to take a picture of it. Oh, it looked like he was about to burst out crying. <laughs> he looked like a sad dog. <laughs> I was like, wow, they put him in a position with no cheating, no interference, and once again, he's lost. Yeah. So, I really enjoyed it. Actually. Yeah. Very good match. Definitely took you through the emotions. So, uh, I think we'll have to do the last in a slightly different order, because, uh, as weirdly uh, announced a couple of hours before the show, Though we did later get a uh, reason behind it. The actual opening match of the night was the WWE Championship match. Yeah, strange decision. Between John Cena, AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose. Now apparently later on it was confirmed that uh, there was a big political debate between Clinton and Trump on television. And yeah. It was clashing with no mercy and they were worried that the later the show went on, you know, the, the more people will be tuning into the political debate rather than the wrestling show. So that's why they decided to go for it and have the lesser meaningful matches later on in the card, to an extent. But yeah. And to be fair, I think it was a pretty decent match. Yes, I mean... Christ. It was one of the few matches that went 20 plus minutes and it didn't stop. It was fast paced, energetic. Yeah, even had a few triple moves. Triple team moves in there. I mean, he had a Cena technically do the double German suplex. Lesnar did it better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I swear there was another one from the top rope. Yeah. No, I think it was the old doomsday device. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And the one thing I, I noticed in this match, when they were doing the whole introductions, it seemed like Ambrose got booed quite a lot. Yeah. Obviously, as we've highlighted in the past, Ambrose has dropped the ball big time ever since he won the title. And he's just not getting the crowd reactions he should be getting. and. Uh. Well, we've already discussed it, but and how much the Austin podcast hurt him as well. I mean, it was a strange thing, because Stars was supposed to be the big heel coming into this. <laughs> yeah, everyone loves him. And uh, he got cheered for the most. <coughs> yeah. And also, I found the ending of this match quite bizarre. Yeah, yeah, because you had a first initial ending of the match until... The ref, Mike Kyoto, restart the match. Uh, what was it? Ambrose had AJ in AJ's submission finisher. Yeah, he was doing the calf crusher. Yeah. And then for some unknown reason, when Cena sort of got into the ring and one on, realised what was going on, he then put the STFU on AJ. Strange decision. Yeah, and then obviously, inevitably, give the guy his due. Yes, he's phenomenal, but he's got two submission moves on him. He inevitably tapped after a while. Obviously, the big question was, well, who's won? And then the referee made the decision, well, right, we'll, we'll just restart the match. Yeah, right decision, in my opinion, because they, we've had this controversy many times. This resulted in vacated titles and all that malarkey, and no one wanted to see that. No, 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 no. So they just restarted it. Yep. And then we got the ending we deserve. Yeah, you see, this one was really strange to me because there was a few finishes in there. And Cena went down to two chair shots. Yeah. Which I thought was a bit strange. Yeah. Don't know whether that's maybe them 
trying to put across that maybe he isn't so Superman anymore. It's like he, we used to see him seeing the kick out of three, four finishers per match. And he got a chair shot to the gut and one to the back, and that was it. Yeah. One, two, three, and still your WWE champion. The champ that runs the camp. AJ Styles. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, this was a amazing main event, which should have been the main event. God's sake, WWE, have some faith in your product. Exactly. I would have tuned in for it. And then again, I'm not American, so I'm, I'm not really too bothered about Trump and Clinton. No. <laughs> yeah. So then, on to what was our actual main event. Yeah. We had the Viper, Randy Orton, against Bray Wyatt. Ooh. Obviously, this had been built up for quite a while over the weeks, and uh, yeah, the promo video was uh, semi-decent. Yeah, he- heavily centred on the mind games. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, that happened a couple of weeks ago on the SmackDown when Randy was searching for Bray. Yeah. And then the, the week after when Bray was searching for Randy and got locked in that container. Mm. And then mysteriously got out. <laughs> yeah. Abigail came to save him. Yeah. Will we ever see Abigail? No, uh, okay. I think it would ruin the mystique. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this was another very good match. Fast paced. You never knew quite who was uh, gaining the advantage. But towards the end of the match, uh, I don't know, he actually shocked us and surprised us. Now, uh, Randy was about to go for the RKO. And then we had the usual inevitable. Uh, 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 oh. We thought, right, okay. Screen just went pitch black. And he went, uh, 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 uh. And then he went back to the ring. It was all pitch black with just a spotlight. And who was in the ring? None other than Luke Harper. Yeah, caught us all by surprise because we had both forgotten about him. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we knew he was that injured, but, you know, he. Been out of spotlight for quite a long time, and it was just like, oh crap, yeah, Luke Harper. Yeah. So, yeah, the Wyatt family are back up in numbers. Well, um, sort of, because if you've read the reports over the last couple of weeks, Eric Rowan is now injured again. Oh, jeez. With a shoulder injury. Oh, Damn it, Eric. So it's like one, one appears and the other goes down injured. <laughs> oh, <geez. coughs> so, yeah, and then, uh, Randy just looked at Luke absolutely amazed. And then Bray quickly took advantage of it. Hit him with his sister Abigail. Yes, and for the first time in a very long time, Bray's actually picked up a win in a singles match on pay-per-view. <laughs> Go Bray! I don't count the, the battleground thing because, they yeah, they beat the New Day, but well, that match was meaningless in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. So, yeah. And that was the end of No Mercy. Yeah. Uh, overall, I quite enjoyed it. I got everything I wanted. Yeah. Yeah, so... It was a decent effort for WWE. Better, better than the last two pay-per-views, that's yeah, for sure. Easily better than the last three. Yeah. I definitely enjoyed this more than SummerSlam, more than... Backlash and more than Clash of Champions. Yeah. But there's <laughs> still work to be done. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So, I think we're, that's all we're going to say on this one. Yep. From your hosts, the Master of the Brain Damage. Well, I've been Martin. And the one and only Sam H. We will see you again for the next one. Sayonara. <laughs> <laughs>